How you doing, everybody? What's up? Can, no, 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 no. Can y'all make a little bit more noise than that? What's going on, everybody? That's right. That's right. All right, so, so they wanted me to, to rap, but I want to talk. Is that okay? Is that okay? I'm just, okay, I'll start with the talk. Because there's some stuff that I want to share with you, um, like, like something that happened last week. Last week, somebody spilled their coffee on me, and I was pissed. Uh, yeah, and, and, and the timing was really bad, too, because I was on my way to seeing this girl I really liked. Uh, you know, I had to change my shirt or whatever. But I went, I saw her, and she was great. We had a great time. She was laughing at my jokes, and they weren't even funny. But <laughs> it, was, it was cool. And then she got to telling me how it's not going to really work out with us. She can't really see any future in it, whatever. It's all right. It happens all the time. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then, okay, so, so last month, right, I want to tell you about something else. I went on spring break to Cancun with a bunch of my friends, and we were really excited about it because we only had one job, and that's to enjoy ourselves. But here's the issue. We went on vacation, and one person wanted to do one thing, Another person wanted to do another thing. I wanted something totally different. And I got to that point that you've always been at, at vacation, where you're like, hey, can, can, we, can we just have a good time? I don't know how this TED Talk turned into my pity party, but I got a lot of things I want to complain about. So uh, let's start with college. Let's start with college. You know how many exams I failed in college? Y'all laughing quiet, but I'm not the only one. I'm not the, yeah, okay, all right. Um, I've, I've failed a bunch. Uh, let's take it back to freshman year, though. I mean, a little more serious. I was uh, clinically depressed because background I was coming from just really didn't fit in with, with what was going on at Penn. Well, let's take it to high school. Let's take it to high school. I was about five feet tall when I got to high school. I'm short now, but I was short then. Um, and I was getting bullied left and right. Uh, I was a nerd. I was making music, getting up on talent shows, getting booed off stage. It's brutal. And I'm just going to skip through middle school because middle school was weird for everybody. All right? <laughs> but elementary school, elementary school, that's when my father murdered my mother. Now, that's something to get mad about. But why? Why do we get angry when we know that being angry just leads to poor decision making. I mean, think about it. Like, e e even for something that's, whether it's something as trivial as getting coffee spilled on you or something as serious as watching your mother get murdered, it's the same category of emotion. It's anger, confusion, what just happened. And Clearly, there's the varying levels of intensity and trauma when you're dealing with coffee versus murder. But the idea is still the same. These things happened to me, and I couldn't control that they happened to me. But look at me now. There's got to be. <laughs> I love that picture. Uh, there's got to be a reason why they had me up here. And so I got this thing in my pocket. It's what they call a bio. Uh, like an intro. I didn't really want them to read it because I feel uncomfortable people reading about things I've done. So I'm going to read it, all right? I'm going to try to keep a straight face because I think the fact that there's a bio, that's hilarious. Actually, I hand wrote it. I transcribed it because I was like, there's no way I did all this. Okay, so <laughs> thing number one. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm just going to try to read this. Founded his own holding company where he manages a music brand, clothing line, and tech venture. Toured all over the world performed at the United Nations, viral music videos, newspaper articles, featured in New York Times bestsellers, Grit by Angela Duckworth, and Option B by Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant. Now, all three of them gave great TED Talks. Much, much, much better than this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, graduating with honors from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Well, that's back before I had any facial hair. <laughs> uh, that's on the uh, <laughs> recognized on Forbes' list of most outstanding 
business school grads of 2018. That's, that's cool, but why is there a list for that? Uh, but <laughs> shout, shout, shout out to Forbes, though. I mean, but like, don't, don't take it away from me. But anyway, uh, and taking his experience as an entrepreneur and a creative to build things at Facebook as a product manager. Shout out to Cheryl Sandberg. Um, now, that's all cool and everything, but let's be real. A lot of people in this room have no idea who I am. And if you're watching this online, you almost certainly have never heard of me before. And if you think about it, when you compare yourself to people who are like really quote unquote successful, uh, you'll realize I haven't done a thing. I mean, ha have you seen the speakers <laughs> that you guys have seen today? They've done real things, right? So, so, so when I compare myself to what other people have done, yeah, I have not done a thing. And you probably thought the same type of thinking when, when you heard about my story, about my mom. You either said, wow, he's been through way more than I have, or you're saying he hasn't been through anything close to what I've been through. But regardless, one thing's the same. We've all been through something. And we're all in a constant quest for fulfillment in the face of that something. And what I've learned is that life, at least to me, is not about getting to a certain, certain point. It's about being happy in that process. And I believe to be happy, you need to achieve mental clarity. Here's how I believe you can do that. By the way, this is my favorite sibling of me and my, my favorite picture of me and my siblings. Thing number one. Relative is negative. Okay, okay, let's face it. Research tells us that the more we compare ourselves to other people, the less happy we are. It just makes us insecure. I remember growing up and thinking about, wow, everybody around me has their mother in their lives, and I wish I had mine. But I couldn't let that stop me from being happy because she would have wanted me to make her proud. And I think the same thing about, about accomplishments. The moment you start comparing your accomplishments to other people's accomplishments, you, you'll realize that you haven't done a thing compared to other people. I've learned that it's not, you know, it's not really about what other people are doing. For me, I'd rather just be the best that I can be. I learned this. Life's not about winning the race. It's about running the mile in under four minutes. You just got to work on your game. And believe it or not, the biggest competitors in the world are a lot less worried about the competition than you might think. For instance, Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian ever. Do you really think he knew how fast his competitors were swimming in their own practices? No, there was no way of knowing. He just practiced every single day to make sure that his time was faster than everybody else. Oh, I'm sorry. It was faster than he could ever imagine his time being. And then when he got to the race, all the races, he won most of them, not because he was trying to beat anybody else, but because his time for himself was a lot faster than everybody else's time for themselves. So he won. You got to work on your game and not be constrained by everybody else's expectations. You see, there's always going to be someone out there who has more. But as my favorite, one of my favorite rappers said, you ain't never going to be happy till you love yours. Item number two, retire your desire. I figured because I'm not rapping for you guys, I might as well rhyme these. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, retire your desire. Remember I told you about that vacation? And, uh, you know, it was, I was miserable because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. But as soon as I stopped focusing on what I wanted and started to think about, what does everybody else want to do? I started having a much better time. I was happier than I could have ever imagined that vacation would have been. And that taught me a powerful lesson. As I wanted less for myself, I became happier. The same thing goes with my mom. The more I, you know, the more I grew up, I would always just say, I wish my mom was here. And now I, I still want her to be here, but I can't have her back. And, and at a very young age, I had to make a decision. Do I want to just focus on what I want for myself, or do I want to create a world where, or help create a world where other kids who come from broken homes have the opportunity to succeed just like I did? 
And that's the path I wanted to choose. Because Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And other very wise people have said things along the lines of what I'm paraphrasing, which is the only way to guarantee happiness is to desire nothing. And finally, take care of your mind and everything else will take care of itself. This world that you see out here, it's all up here in the mind. There's no such thing as an objective reality. It's just a collection of people's perspectives. Mental clarity means controlling the world by controlling your mind. You see, while I was growing up, I, you know, or just was living my life, I've worked really hard to achieve some really cool things. But I've also worked just as hard and failed miserably. And at other times, I didn't work hard and had the opportunity right in front of me to succeed, but I dropped the ball. I made mistakes, and I didn't succeed, and it was all my fault. What mental clarity means is that regardless of the good, the bad, or anything in between that happens to us, and regardless of whose fault it is, it cannot impact our happiness. We just learn from it deal with the consequences, and moved on. When you do that, your happiness can never be compromised. You see, because check this out. When you want things, then there's never enough. And when you compare the, when you, <laughs> we're going to cut that in the tape. Uh, <laughs> when you want things, it's never enough. And when you compare yourself to others, then you're doing too much. Win up in your head, and you'll never fall. But try to beat them, and you ain't winning at all. You see, I wanted to talk, but they wanted me to rap, so I thought I'd do both. I hope you like that. <laughs> I hope I made you cry, and I hope I made you laugh. But regardless, remember this. Life's not about having what you want. It's about wanting what you have. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.